Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in. We're going to do some playing tonight with stamp sync and paper and try to create a card to send to someone to bring them joy. We're going to do a fun card that moves tonight. So I'm super excited and I'm hoping that you all will help me create this card and together we'll inspire each other's creativity and make more cards to share and bring joy to people around the world because that's what it's all about, right? Uh, there's really nothing quite like opening that mailbox and getting that hand addressed envelope with a handmade card inside. I mean, it's it's just awesome. So thank you all for what you do in uh, making and sending cards. You're amazing. And my um, hopefully my little tiny part in that is that I help uh, inspire you creati creatively. <laughs> so we're going to just relax tonight, grab a beverage, kick back, we're here to just hang out and have some fun, right? Um, I don't always know. In fact, I usually don't know what our card is going to look like when it's done. Tonight, I um, I kind of know, but I'm going to have you. We're going to do a different uh, color version of the card that we're making. And so I'm going to have you help me choose um, what it's going to look like. So yay, that's hopefully more fun for you. And it's uh, more fun for me because you guys always have the best ideas. So thanks for hanging out with me on this Saturday night. Uh, welcome, everyone. I see lots of you tuning in. That's just awesome. And let's go ahead and start creating. Uh, my name is Susan Campfield. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been for 25 amazing years and looking forward to well, sure. Another 25 more. I could do that. Yeah, no worries. Um, so thanks for uh, hang, uh, hanging out with me. Um, now the card we're going to do tonight, this is a little bit unusual. Typically I do a video, make a card, and then um, quite often the, the measurements and directions for that card go out in my email, my project sheet emails. If you are not subscribed to the project sheet emails, and you're someone that likes to have more creative ideas um, popping into their inbox, um, I'd recommend you go ahead and go to SueStampfield.com, click on subscribe, and then, oh, I don't know, I send them out maybe three times a month, maybe four, usually more like three times a month, um, and there's usually, um, usually two project sheets in <clears throat> the email. Today's email had three, <laughs> and... There were even more. Well, one was actually had two in the, in, uh, so I guess technically you could say there were four. Um, so I try to just stuff those emails full of value for you because, um, you know, I, it's, it's, that's what you want. I hope is, is inspiration. You got yours today, Mary. Excellent. So a little bit, um, when you love what you do, it doesn't work. So true. So, so true. I love my job. So thank you for, thank you all for um, watching and commenting and um, you're supporting me by doing that. So I appreciate it very much. So um, yeah, so a little unusual because I sent this, um, we're going to do this card. Let's, let's hold it up. I don't know. It doesn't always work so good here, but can you see him dance? <laughs> this is the dancing gnome card, which we're going to be making tonight here. I'll put them in front of my face. There we go. <laughs> and uh, we're going to change it up though. We're going to do some different papers based on what you all decide we want to do. So this one was in the project sheet email today. I actually already did the project sheet for this version. Um, I linked this video link in that project sheet. So whatever we create tonight, if you want to make exactly that one, you'll be able to click on that project sheet and go um, see what we end up with tonight, right? Um, if you are not currently subscribed to the project sheets and you subscribe now, right before I went live, I went in there and I added um, this uh, gnome, dancing gnome to the welcome email. So when you first subscribe to the emails, you get an email back saying, are you sure that you really want these emails? And once you confirm that subscription, you'll get a welcome email. And in that email, you'll get um, three project sheets now, uh, one of them being this one. The other one I think is the envelope flat fun fold. And then a gorgeous card with the hues of happiness. It's also a fun fold. I love fun folds. This one's a fun fold too. 
We so my awesome uh, Stampfield Stars. Whoa, where are they? Um, Stampfield Stars team members um, actually helped me make this one on our Thursday night um, team video, and so we're gonna do a different version tonight. So let's get this party started. You saw it in the email today, Linda. Awesome. If you are signed up for the emails and you're not getting them, shoot me an email at hmm, what's my email? What's my email? I know it. There it is. Uh, shoot me an email, susan at suestampfield.com, and we'll see if we can get it sorted out. Sometimes it's actually on my end, my uh, email provider. Um, for whatever reason, I'll send them your email and they'll they'll fix it. <laughs> Sometimes, for whatever reason, your email is blocking them. So, but we can, we can try and sort it out. So let me know if you subscribed and you're not getting them so we can get that taken care of. I'm removing all the banners so that we can see uh, all our fun tonight, right? All right, let's go. <laughs> I got <laughs> uh, technology. It's wonderful because it allows me to hang out with you all, but yeah, sometimes it's challenging too. So this is our fun little gnome card. Now I need to give a shout out to uh, Connie Ingram was the demonstrator that I uh, swapped with at the Stampin' Up! Leadership Conference two weeks ago in New Orleans. She gave me this adorable a witch card, um, which started this whole party going. <laughs> so uh, I showed this to you all. You asked me, uh, to show you how to make it, Connie had showed me her her trick uh, when she swapped with me. She had the, the little tools there or the, the piece of the mechanism. And so together we made this version. Now the project sheet for this one also went out in today's email. So you will have that one now as well. I ended up doing a different separate project sheets for both just because they were completely different projects, pro you know, products on there, even though they were the same uh, general layout and, and, uh, mechanisms. But so with one of the, I don't want to say drawbacks because this one is an adorable card. Um, and you know, most of us don't do as many Halloween cards as we do Christmas cards. Um, so this one required stamping and fussy cutting out the, um, the legs and boots. And of course it also required coloring. So this one took a little bit longer, but oh my gosh, it's totally worth it, right? I mean, it's adorable. However, I was thinking, hmm, what else can we do dancing? And so um, the gnome, the advantage with the gnome is that the feet are a die, right? So you don't have to fussy cut. <laughs> so the, I use the die for the feet and then he doesn't have any coloring on him. I mean, it would be if you use the stamp gnome, but that would be a whole different problem because it doesn't have the separate feet. So with the gnome, it's just um, even easier to do this card. So we're going to make a gnome tonight, but I would like to change it up a little bit. So um, I've got some options here. So let's start with the gnome hat. I would like you to vote and let me know if you think we should do it in a green polka dot or if we should do the hat in a diagonal stripe. And we'll decide on the other papers based on our selection there. We'll also decide on whether we're going to go with a garden green base or a, um, a real red base. Again, depending on which, uh, which one you prefer. So let me know stripe or polka dots. Technically, they're actually not polka dots. They're sort of like flattened ovals, but <clears throat> well, for just to make it easier for you guys typing, just say stripes or dots. <laughs> and uh, we will go from there. So I'm going to just do a quick little recap here. This is where it would be super awesome if I had a moderator that could count these. Um, I'm seeing a lot of polka dots. So that's awesome. It looks like the polka dots are going to be our hat. And you know what? No matter what we do, it's going to be stinking cute, you guys, right? It's going to be so cute. All right, I'm clearing off. You would not believe the weird, <laughs> the weird random <laughs> things I have on my desk. All right, so let's bring in our handy dandy die cutting machine. I probably should have grabbed the, the mini for this job, but I didn't. So here we go. Here we go. All right. Oh, look at this. I have a beard that's stuck in the dye. I don't know. <laughs> I, you know what? And I, I wonder when I die cut it last, if I actually had two pieces of paper and thought I had just one. So, hey, get look at that. Voila, our beard is cut. Is that cheating? Can I do that? 
you guys okay with that? You know how to die cut, right? Um, but let's let's do our hat here. So we're gonna do these not polka dots, <laughs> flattened, uh, almost diamond. I don't know. They're like flattened pointy ovals. If that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my hat on there and just send that through. And normally I would probably um, die cut the hat the beard, the pants, the whole deal, uh, all in one go, but I'm not sure what color we're going to want to go with yet. So I could have done the nose, I guess. And our beard's already done. All right. So there we have our little hat. Super cute. So for his pants, for his pants, we can either do green or we can do um, red. So let me know if you want our little gnome guy to have green pants and shoes or red. Green or red. Ah, Nicole's cat just brought in something large and flappy. Please tell me it's not a bat. <laughs> Although it'd be sadder if they got a bird, I guess. And yes, you're absolutely right. We certainly could do puff paint on the beard. We're probably not, we're kind of going to go for the easy button tonight. So we're probably not going to do that, but we absolutely could. Sorry, I left the microphone there. <laughs> red shoes for a Southern gnome, green, green, red, green, green. I'm seeing more green than red. So we're going to go green. And in the, in the PDF tutorial, I have exactly the right size that you would need to die cut the feet, uh, be one and a quarter by two. But honestly, usually we just grab a scrap, right? <laughs> do you guys do that too? Like, hmm, will it fit on here? Yeah, it will. So I doubt that you uh, cut everything to size on those, but you can if you want, right? You've got that capability. All right, while we're doing this, let's get a nose. Mm, hang on, let's see if I got one over here. Oh, I'm sure I have a piece of Blushing Bride somewhere, but it's not where I want it. So, again, this is way bigger than I need, and I just ripped it <laughs> because we got a card to make here. We don't have time for cutting. We're just going to go, 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 go. All right. So, I'm going to use Blushing Bride. You also could use, you know, whatever color you want. Um, I'm going to put that on here. Um, petal pink also works. You could do soft suede. You could do crumb cake. Crumb cake would actually be really cute for a nose. All right, here we go. We've got our pants. They match our hat. We've got our nose right here. And we've got... A mechanism here. So I am now switching from the gnome dies because I think we've cut the ones we need for this project. Uh oh, I just dropped my hat. Hold on. I dropped the gnome hat die and I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to put it back on the magnet where it belongs. Um, so this die is from a different set of dies. This die is from the candy cane dies. Why am I so. Let me go up a little higher. There we go. Um, these are the candy cane dies. They come with this super awesome diagonal die. And then these cut out the candy canes that are in the paper and also the stamps. And then it has the different leaves. And then it has this piece. Now this piece is actually to um, do a stick a candy cane in. In fact, this little gnome would be adorable to decorate a candy cane. However, that's not what we're doing tonight. So this feels really thick. This thick. Yeah, that felt too thick. I don't want thick. Um, so I'm going to just cut this. Actually, I already got one cut, but we'll go ahead and cut it so I can show you what it looks like when it's cut. And this mechanism or this um, candy cane holder will actually uh, make two of these carts. Okay. I'm going to set this aside for now. We'll need it in a little bit. 
you know what I'm finding today? If I can't find something on my desk, look on the floor <laughs> because everything is falling. All right, so it pokes out these two little holes and it gives you this piece right here. So if you had a candy cane, you would just slide it in those holes and you would decorate right here. So you could put a little gnome on there and it would be adorable, right? But we're gonna do something different. So did anyone see what I did with the candy cane dies? Oh my goodness. Well, no, they're just gone. They vanished. Poof, in a puff of smoke. Okay. Oh, here they are. The desk situation is becoming <laughs> to the crisis state, you guys. I'm going to have like, to take a day and just clean the desk. Okay. So can anyone relate? Is it just me? All right. So what is the best color for stamp room carpet? <laughs> hmm. It's a, a brown, um, something that hides stuff that you spill on it, right? If you spill a lot of Night of Navy ink, go with navy carpet. No, no. Um, mine is a lovely muddy brown color, and that works for us because we have dogs. All right. So we're going to take this piece, and we're going to cut off the sides. This does not have to be pretty. I'm cutting it straight-ish, <laughs> but this is not going to show, right? So you just cut off these side pieces. Okay, that one bowed out a little bit. Totally doesn't matter. And then you're going to cut it in half. Okay. Each of these will make a card. All right. But that's actually a little bit more than we need. So we're going to cut it down a bit more. So I'm cutting off what? I don't know. It looks like a quarter inch, I guess I'd say. it's This is not scientific. It's, uh, it's kind of whatever. All right. Now for the witch... We actually, if you recall, when we made the witch, and I do have a die where we make the switch, uh, die, a video where we make the switch, we cut a little notch in there and we attached one leg to each notch. This one, it's all one piece, the, the legs. So we don't need to even notch it. We're just going to adhere it right to this piece. And we're going to attach it to the card with a dimensional and it's going to swing. Well, actually, we're not going to attach it. We're going to sort of hang it off a dimensional, if that makes sense. So just to recap what we did on that, and this is in the tutorial. We started with this. We cut off the sides. We cut it in half. And then we cut it down a bit. If you're doing the witch, you're going to cut it down a bit and cut out the notch. Okay. So just a little recap there. I'm going to take the liquid glue to attach this. If you're not a liquid glue fan, you could use a glue dot here. Yeah, just a little bit more there. And I'm going to just do it here. The little feet and pants for our gnome. I'm going to grab this piece. This piece is two and a half by four and this is where the this is what's going to be on the front of the card that's this piece right here and so we're going to take our let's go ahead and put before I attach that I like to put this over it so I can make sure I like how it is so um, we're going to go ahead I have a question for you so on this one I put the nose outside of the hat the other thing you can do, and let me just kind of show you what it looks like, is you can put the nose on first and, and put the nose under the hat. Which should we do? Under or over? Let me know in the comments which you think we should do on this guy. And that will determine if I put the hat on first or the nose. So uh, over or under on the gnome nose. What is the size of the hole? The hole is about a half inch. Um, it's not exactly a half inch, but I think a half inch would do the job if you have a half inch punch or similar. Yeah, it's slightly smaller than a half inch. Um, so it's the seven. Uh, wait, no. <laughs> Math, Susan, come on. It's sixteenths of an inch. Can I do that small? Um, yeah, whatever that is. Somebody in, that knows math, tell me, please. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing, you guys. Um, <laughs> Janine, you're a teacher. <laughs> tell me uh, what that would be. Sixteenth of an inch? Um, 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 um. 
Oh, come on, Susan. You can do this. Uh, eight sixteenths, seven sixteenths. Oh, that was hard. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been in math class. Look at you guys. Yay for my math people. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> um, over, under, over, 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 under, over, over, under, under. I see mm, it's pretty, pretty close but I think a few more overs. Turn it over and do centimeters instead. What? Centimeters? No, you're really going to mess me up then. Although our, our uh, Australian people would appreciate it. All right. I My take your pick tool is across, is just, it's right there. I, I don't know why I'm, I'm, wait, wait, wait. What did we decide? Over. We went over. I'm putting this in the wrong spot. All right. So I'm going to take, let me not be so lazy. Let me grab my take your pick tool. Let me slow down a little bit. All right. I get all excited about making the card and I get carried away. I'm going to pick up another glue dot. I've already put one on here and I've kind of smushed it into a blob. But it in the tutorial, I say to fold it, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You just don't want it. Let's see if I can show you if I tilt it right. There we go. You don't want it to cross that line. So those um, lines that are embossed in the die actually show you where the hat goes and it shows you where the nose goes. So we, uh, the majority voted for the nose to go over the hat. So we're going to put the hat on first. And then we're going to pop up that nose with the dimensional. Now, if I had done the nose under, I would have just done it with a glue duct. And I almost did that by mistake because I was spacing off. Okay. So there's even a little spot where it shows you where the nose goes. So really very user-friendly dies. Um, I am not 100% sure if this bundle is in stock. Um, I know the the stamp set was back ordered the last time I looked, and that is likely still the case. Um, you can order the dies, but not the bundle right now. If you are interested in knowing when those come back in stock, shoot me an email, susan at stampfield.com, and I will uh, track that for you and let you know when they're back in stock. All right, so I am just kind of positioning my gnome on my paper to figure out where I want those legs to be. And with this gnome, I do find that I want the beard pretty low. So that looks pretty good to me right there. So I'm going to just hold on to the pants and the foot there, the shoe, whatever. And I've got my hole. And then I just moved it. That's right. Um, I'm going to take a mini dimensional. And I'm going to put the mini dimensional in the hole. I'm not actually sticking down the paper at all. I'm just putting it in the open hole. The idea is that it's going to swing on that dimensional and it's not going to fall off the card because this is going to go over the top of it and hold it in place. Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to go flip our uh, little gnome over here and we're going to put a few more mini dimensionals on the back of the gnome. I'm going to put one up near the top of the hat and one kind of right over where I attached the hat and the glue dots. I'm kind of grabbing both some of the hat and some of the beard with the dimensional. Let me hold those up so you can see that a little closer. And I don't want any on the beard because those that might interfere with the feet being able to swing. So I'm going to pull the backing pieces off of our little gnome guy here. And we're going to put this right on here. So cute. All right, let's see how we did. Yay. <laughs> he is a dancing fool. Love it. So that is, that's it, you guys. Like, isn't that a nifty idea? Shout out again to Connie Ingram, who came up with this clever idea on her witch card. And so that we can, we'll have to do a little creative thinking on what else we can have dance, right? Um, anything that has separate uh, legs will, will work. So, um, and it doesn't even have to be an animal or a critter or a person. It could be um, an apple on a tree, right? Or uh, the possibilities are endless. All right. So we've got our, our gnome here. we got to finish our card. So let's bring in our pieces. Um, we've got a lot of green going here. So I am kind of leaning towards the green. Um, and then we're going to add some designer paper. But I think we'll add a little bit of color in that designer paper and we'll do some um, stripes. So let's uh, bring in the options. You guys can help me pick 
pick what we want to do here. So we have this. Clearly that is too small, but it's close. Uh, let's see here. This one is a bigger stripe. We're definitely not using both. Don't worry. Nobody panic. And they go, oh my gosh, Susan, that, that's ugly. <laughs> um, let's see what else we've got. We've got a green diagonal stripe. That's kind of fun. Um, I do have a stripe on the back of the candy canes, but I kind of want to hoard that because these, um, the dies will fit and die cut these. So I have something else planned for that. So I'm going to hold on to that. All right. I'm just kind of quickly recapping here on what my options are. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So let me see here. Oh, this is the other one we could use. We could also use these fun candy canes. So let's kind of do a little layout here and see what we think we would like to go with. So I'm thinking we could do on the panel across the front, which this is a little bit skinny for, but it will give us an idea. We could do the green that matches the hat here and then have candy canes behind. That's kind of cute. Or we could have multicolor stripe behind. Also cute. Um, let's see. I'm gonna give this a try here. This one only has, this one has pool party in it. This one does not, it just has, oh no, it does have pool party. My bad, it's just a bigger diagonal. Hmm, don't like that as well. All right, let me just try this one. Got to look at all our options, right? Let's see what the candy canes look like in the front. That seems a little too busy to me. All right. So, all right. I'm going to say one option is this. <laughs> You guys liking the candy canes, need some red, too much sugar. <laughs> That's why the gnome is dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Could be. All right. So we could go with the whole green palette. That's one option, right? We could go with the green in the front and the candy canes behind. So, so all green, green and candy canes or... stripes so candy canes stripes or green let me know in the comments green candy canes or stripes and i'm pretty sure we're going to go with this for that piece so i'm going to go ahead and cut that while you discuss amongst yourself let me just take a look at my cheat sheet here and see what size that is four by two and a half How we doing here? Let's see what our votes are. <laughs> um, I think the stripes. Oh, it's pretty close. All right, hang on. Um, still, this is two and a half. Sorry, I should be cutting this in front of you. I had the cutter right here. <laughs> um, wait, no, it was going to be this side. That's right. Okay. This one. All right. All right. Let me do a quick count between, uh, let's see where we're at. One, 
one, two, two for stripes, one for candy cane, two for stripes, stripes, candy canes. I think the stripes just kind of squeaked it out. All right. Let me just find the stripes. And we will get those cut here. Grab my package. Here they are. I do like the mini candy canes. Well, you know what? We'll we'll put those on the inside. Ha! Ah, we'll find a place. We can squeeze them in. No worries. All right, we're gonna go for by five and a quarter. This is the layer for the backing piece, is what I usually refer to it as in the tutorials. And then we get to do the fun part, you guys. We get to do embellishments. Yay! Yay for embellishments. And then I have my basket of 25-year uh, anniversary cards that I've been slowly sharing with you in every video. So we'll, we'll take a peek at some of those here at the end to just get a little more creative inspiration coming your way. So I'm going to just put some adhesive on the back of this piece. Sticky, sticky. All right, let's get you on here. This piece I forgot to score. So this piece is two and three quarters by four and three quarters, and I'm going to score it at half inch. Half inch, Sue, not a quarter inch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. So this is now four and a quarter. This is a half inch because remember it was four and three quarters. Here our green on this. And we'll have our, and this is garden green that I'm using, by the way. I don't know that I ever mentioned that. Apologies. Let's see if Susan put the tear and tape away. Ah, I did. Ah, love it when I put things away. It doesn't happen very often, which is why my desk is messy. So on the back here, on that half inch scored section of the piece, I'm gonna just attach some tear and tape. And this is the panel that goes on the front of our card. So let's just adhere this right on here. Just pop it next to the bottom and wrap it around there like so. So that's just kind of like our door that opens. We're gonna adhere our little gnome to this backing piece. Now, when you adhere this panel to the card, you only put adhesive on the bottom, right? You don't wanna stick your card closed. It does need to be able to open because we're gonna have our greeting on this side. So we're only gonna put adhesive down here. Stick him right on there. Oops, do you see what I did? Is that going to bug us? All right, is it anyone else noticing <laughs> that my flattened oval polka dots are going different directions on this and this? Is that going to bug me, you guys? I'm super picky. Ah, I think it's okay. Is it okay? I think it's okay. <laughs> We're going to go with it. Ah! All right. I mean, yeah, I think it's okay. All right. It just makes him all the more whimsical, but I do want it in the center because that, that will drive me nuts. All right. And I'm putting it a little high because I'm going to have a greeting down here. Okay. So I've got that. I don't have any sticky here. Yay. Um, and then now we're going to put our, let's do our greeting stuff. All right. So... We've got this panel for the inside, and we've got our stamps. These are from the Kindest Gnome stamp set. The dies are in the bundle. And we're going to grab good old Garden Green ink. And again, I did not. <laughs> um, in, your, in your tutorial, it has the proper size that you need for this greeting. I just grabbed a scrap off my desk, so 
that works too, right? So I'm going to do warm wishes. And then for the inside, we're going to say, sorry, look how lazy I am. I didn't even put my labels on yet. So I have to double check the right side up before I stamp. <clears throat> That's okay. Paper has two sides. If I mess it up, no worries. All right. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for the inside. Let's go ahead and close that up. Put that away. And I'm going to slide these inky stamps way over there because I'm going to bring the die cutting machine back in just for a moment so that I can die cut this frame. Um, now these warmest wishes perfectly fit on the one of the fabulous frames dies. So let me <clears throat> let me just locate those in my pile of stuff over here. So these are the fabulous frames dies. And can you see it right there? It's hiding. It looks like, like if you go to a museum and you see a fancy painting, sometimes they'll have like a brass plaque with the name of the painting or the name of the artist. That's kind of what this, this little labeled thing is. It's got the little holes that you could do the brads. Um, and we're going to put something else over those, but I'm just going to poke out there's still some paper in them from last time. So we're going to go ahead and die cut our warm wishes here. Right there. Boy, it's a good thing my husband doesn't see me making this green card because uh, we're in Minnesota here, uh, which is where the Minnesota Vikings play football when they feel like it. <clears throat> and tomorrow is our home opener against the Green Bay Packers, our arch rival. So my husband is frantically getting ready for the big tailgate party uh, before the game. So don't tell him I'm doing a green card. <laughs> All right, we're going to take this off and pull this off and pop this out. All right, there we have our warm wishes. Isn't that cute? Perfect fit for this particular sentiment. All right, let's set that aside. Let's put our card together. I think we need a little candy cane action here though, right? Let's grab our candy canes. This piece is two and a half by four, which is the same as that piece. And so I'm just going to trim this to two and a half. And this is one inch. Just pretty wide, but then that way you really get to see the candy canes. You could even, you know, Fussy cut out one of these candy canes and have him holding it. That would be cute. Have it tucked behind his beard there, just peeking out. All right. There we go. So we're going to open this up, and then that piece is going to layer right inside there. And then there's just enough room to sign it. I don't. I put my love into making the card, not necessarily writing a lot inside. <laughs> so it usually says love Susan. That's pretty much the extent of it. So there we have our inside message and a place to sign our card. We've got our little party gnome over here. And we're going to just add our warmest wishes down here. And then we're going to bling it up. Bring the bling, right? All right, you could either do, um, this is actually big enough to do um, full-size dimensional. I believe in the directions. I said a mini, though, or two minis, so I'll follow my directions. But you could, there is enough room to do a big one. I wasn't sure. But now that I see it, there totally is. I couldn't remember. All right. All right, and then we've got these fun things. So on the top of his hat, I did uh, one of these sequins, which was actually sweet sorbet, but I thought it looked just fine on real red. Um, so for this one, we'll use the green ones out of here. These are actually on the same page in the mini catalog as this paper. So, all right, where'd my take your pick tool go? <clears throat> Somebody didn't put it away. Who could have that been? All right, let's pop this off. Put that right on top of his little hat. Put a little sparkle, a little shimmer. Party, party gnome. All right. 
And then um, we can put something there. On this one, I used the red rhinestones. That one slid a little bit. Which we could do on this one. We could also do regular rhinestones. Or um, could we color? We actually don't have. Um, what do I have? We don't have a garden green blend, Stampin' Blend color. Um, mm -hmm. What this would do. Just try this. This is the dark shaded spruce. So I took the dark shaded spruce and just colored two small rhinestones. Um, again, you could put red down there because we've got a little bit of red in that stripe on the back, but we're going to try these green rhinestones here. Because because rhinestones are clear and see-through, colors on them can be very forgiving. <laughs> so even though I don't have a garden green uh, marker, the um, shaded spruce, the dark shaded spruce is close enough, right? So there we have our little gnome. Yay, we did it, you guys. So here's the, the red version, your peppermint candy, and here's your spearmint. <laughs> over here. So there we have our little happy gnomes. And looks like on this, this one, I had that sequin up a little bit higher. Let's try that. You could even put a um, mini dimensional behind it. Let's try that. Let's see how that would work. Mary, you take the paper off and stick it behind tip of the hat and then it gives me kind of a flatter surface to stick this to now it pokes up a little bit higher so there we have our two versions yay we did good guys thank you thanks for helping me uh do another version of our gnome super fun all right let's uh let's take a quick look at some happy mail here i can't remember which ones i haven't shown you yet Let's see, here's one right here. Okay, set these aside. This one is gorgeous. Cottage Rose card. Is that one from Ashley? No, I think it's from, I don't remember who it's from. Let's find out. Let's open the card, Sue. That will help you. Yes, from Ashley Carlson, who just had a new baby, her first baby boy. Her and her husband did, so uh, last week. But beautiful card from Ashley with the Cottage Rose uh, stamp set and the Abigail rose paper and she used the some of the rose gold foil back there uh, the rose gold foil is part of the weekly deals right now actually uh, in the email I sent today there's a link to get to the weekly deals or you can go to my suestampfield.com site click on shop now and click on weekly deals to check them out so that one's from Ashley these are um, cards that were sent to me from uh, friends for my 25th anniversary with Stampin' Up. This one came via airmail from my friend in Australia, Linda Dalkey. Another beautiful card with the same set with the Cottage Rose stamp set. Gorgeous card from Linda. I think she did, she might have done a video with this one or maybe she did this for one of her classes, but um, beautiful card from Linda. And let's see, well, here's a cute one. This is from... Is this one from this is from Lisa Marshall with the adorable now she used the hues of happiness paper to stamp the little bird from the bird or to punch out the little bird super cute stamped the little sign there so super cute card from Lisa Marshall uh, let's see this one is from uh, Donna Griffith, who uh, was the demonstrator management, uh, de demonstrator development manager for our area in Minnesota for many years and has recently retired from Stampin' Up! She was a Stampin' Up! employee. And Carol reached out to her for the card shower and she sent me this beautiful card. So fun. Oh, let's do one more, shall we? <laughs> this one is from 
uh, Nancy, uh, Nancy and Kayla at Stamping uh, Before Anything Else, Stamping BAE. Um, this is the mask and they did the, um, the, the, the paste stuff <laughs> with the, with a mask and it's glittery and it's really cool with the adorable hippos from Celebration. So another cute card from Nancy and Kayla. Okay, we'll stop there. We'll save some more for the next video. And I'm going to flip this around so that I can say goodbye. Uh, let's see here. I uh, Yes, there's the right button. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. I was reading the comments. I'm like, what did I miss? What's going on? You're going to cheer for the Vikings. Yay, Skull Vikings. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, one more quick reminder. So you can get the PDF tutorial. Um, if you're not subscribed to my emails and you didn't get it this afternoon, you can get that PDF tutorial here, suestampfield.com. Click on subscribe and then select the project sheet, uh, the free project sheet newsletter. And those uh, that will come in a welcome email, but you do need to uh, watch for the email to confirm that you, you did want them. So, and then you'll get the welcome email. Any issues, shoot me an email, susan at suestampfield.com. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll be back again Tuesday evening, 7.30 Central Time for some more paper crafting fun. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.